Hello, watercolor painters. My name is Ekaterina Smirnova, and this is an advanced lesson on how to paint a forest waterfall. Today, I'm using a technique that is called alla prima, which is from Italian means at the first attempt. I will be following my little sketch, and here are my palette colors, out of which I've picked just a few. The brush I'm using is soft, bristle, pointy, and here are the colors. The blue, which is closer to the French ultramarine color. Let's clean our brush. The second color is sap green, which is quite bright green. And the third is sepia brown. I will begin with diluting my blue, uh, add a lot of water and just uh, very simply apply on the sky area. Very loose, no need to stress out about how equal this color is. I don't like using pencil when I'm painting, so I will use this very light blue color also marking where my waterfall rocks will go as well. Now I'm mixing green and blue together in order for me to paint forest. You can add as much water as you like, but remember that when your colors will dry, the, the color will appear much lighter than you applied on the paper when it was wet. At the foot of the waterfall there is also some grass, so let's put a little bit of green there as well. Now I'm going to mix two colors, sepia and blue. This color I will be using to paint the rocks of the waterfall. By mixing those two colors you should get something like cooler brown. And using your brush very loosely, but yet keep in mind that all of the rocks should be appearing rather horizontally to give perspective, start painting your rocks. Since the green color for the forest did not dry yet, you will notice that the brown color and green will be blending, which is okay. It will give you a nice a la prima effect. I recommend you at times to add more blue or less blue. This will give you a variety on the tones of the rocks. Now try to get the darkest color as you possibly can. Do not dilute it much with water because this time we are painting the darkest, the closest, and the major rocks. Now it's finally the time to paint the water fall itself. The brush should be somewhat dry-ish and the paper preferably should be rough. If you have the hot press paper it's gonna be highly uh, impossible to create the same effect. But if it's rough or cold press you still can achieve this sort of dripping waterfall effect. I would say that this is the most hardest and most important part of the painting, which is going to be very hard to fix. That's why perhaps you should be practicing it on a different paper. I will now use the same color uh, to make a foreground a little bit darker, so all of the attention would go to the water of the waterfall. 
This is a visual trick that is commonly used by artists. Pay attention to how I'm using my brush in order to create some splashes from the waterfall. To create some texture to the water, I'm diluting blue paint with water and randomly will be applying this light blue uh, all around to the waterfall flow. I like to go hiking around Hatskill Mountains, upstate New York. There are many of waterfalls there and most of the inspiration usually comes from that area. By the way, there is a great documentary film about Catskill Mountains. It's called To Be Forever Wild. And I've been also a part of this film. And uh, you can see me walking around with the film crew and sketching a lot around the area of upstate New York. Now I would like to deepen the colors of the forest. For that, you could use a mixture of green and blue. This will give you a cooler green color. I would like to feature some of the trees in the forest and I will make them look like uh, pine trees. I really like to walk around pine forests and the smell of the forest and the freshness of the waterfall will give you a sense of the wonderful summer in your painting. Now an important step, you need to create a 3D effect of the water of the fall. For that, I will use light blue color and you can only do this when the darker color of the waterfall is dry. Otherwise, you have a possibility of dragging all of that dark color through. If you made a mistake, try correcting it with a paper towel. You could stop here, but there is always an extra step you can take in order to elevate your painting further. This time I am using a mix of blue and a little bit of sepia color in order to paint the shadows of the forest on the far ground. A mix of blue and green to deepen the shadows of the closer trees is also a good idea. To brighten up the top right corner, I will use a kitchen paper towel to remove the excess of the color. The painting is done. It is still wet. It took me about 20 minutes to complete it. In my tutorials, you never get to see my studio. But this time, I'd like to invite you to visit my studio at the art residency called VIT, Literature of the Art Students League of New York. I absolutely enjoyed my time here and created a lot of works. And I'd like to say that you should definitely consider applying for it as well. If you like watching my tutorials, please subscribe for the YouTube channel. Also, visit my website 
екатерина-смирнова.com